most of us are still numb with shock. And the Western media, at least sections of the Western media, has not made it any easier. Just before I came in to make this video, I was listening to an expert here being interviewed. And yet again, I heard the expert saying, yeah, because we've heard this rhetoric uh, very many times. Yet again, I heard him saying that we should consider that in the Ethiopian case, the pilot was only 29 years old. Yeah, and the first officer had only 200 hours yeah, flight time to his name. He of course conveniently yeah, omitted to talk about the captain's flight hours yeah, and went straight for his age. Anyway, apart from the shocking new theory about what happened last Sunday in Ethiopia, in this video I'm also going to reveal an elephant in the room. This big, huge elephant has been standing in the room all the time, yeah, but it seems that everybody has ignored it. Well, in a few minutes, you'll know what it is. But let me just say, part of the reason why this elephant has survived in the room for so long is because as soon as aviation experts start using technical terms, they lose most of us. And maybe this is deliberate, yeah, because the whole idea is for you to believe that it is all so complex. Aviation engineering, too complicated. Yeah, don't even try and think about it. Don't even try and figure out <laughs> anything. You can't. You're not brilliant enough. Well, I don't think most of these engineers are as brilliant as a man who was called Albert Einstein. And this is what Albert Einstein said. Genius is making complex ideas simple. Not making simple ideas complex. And even more relevant yeah, to what I'm trying to say here, yeah, this widely acknowledged genius also said, if you can't explain it simply, then you don't understand it well enough. And I guess that applies even to the most complex things you can think about. If you can't explain it simply, then definitely you don't understand it well enough. Anyway, let's get right down to it. And we shall start with the elephant in the room. And to do that, we have to go back yeah, to the history of the 737 8 Max. And we shall focus on a problem that engineers faced right from the beginning. That problem is that they had to fit in yeah, a much more fuel-efficient engine under the wing of the 737 in order to create the Max 8. And the problem was that this fuel efficient engine, yeah, more fuel efficient engine, was larger. And they had to fit it under the wing of a, of a single aisle jet, yeah, which, was, uh, which had very low riding uh, landing gear. In other words, they had very limited space to fit in a much larger engine. So how did they solve this problem? They did two things. First of all, they extended the nose landing gear by 8 inches. And the second thing they did is what is very significant okay, and very relevant. And indeed, the elephant in the room. The engineers moved the engine slightly forward and higher up. Now, on your screens right now, you can see a comparison yeah, of the Max 8 engine position and the engine position of another aircraft. Now the engine position in an aircraft is extremely important. It changes the way an aircraft behaves in flight. But ordinarily this is not a problem because as engineers are developing the aircraft, yeah, they'll make compensation here and there yeah, where they feel the aircraft is behaving in a way they do not want it to behave. Yeah, they'll make adjustments maybe to the way the wing is shaped, maybe to its length, etc, etc. So it's not usually a big problem. However, in the case of the Max 8, this is what happened. Yeah, and I want to read this directly from what an expert wrote. And I quote, The relocated engines and their refined nacelle shape caused an upward pitching moment. In essence, the Max nose was getting nudged skyward. And so, Boeing quietly added a new system 
to compensate for some unique aircraft handling characteristics during its Part 25 certification and help pilots bring the nose down in the event that the jet's angle of attack drifted too high when flying manually, putting the aircraft at risk of stalling. Now let's simplify this and let's start by defining what stall is. Stall, put in simple terms, is when there's a reduction in the lift yeah, of the aircraft, in the lift of the wings, you know, by the wind and the air flowing under it. Now two things that can cause a stall is when the aircraft is moving too slowly, the speed is too low. The other thing which can cause a stall is what is being referred to as the angle of attack. Simply put, the angle of attack is the angle at which the aircraft yeah, approaches the oncoming wind. Angle of attack is extremely important in aviation and for obvious reasons and I think you get it. Now for example, if the nose of the aircraft yeah, is pushed up too high, in technical terms that would be called an angle of attack that is high, then the aircraft can stall. And I believe you can see a diagram on your screens right now demonstrating that, you know, the movement of air around the wing. So the long and short of it is that the angle of attack, yeah, must be at an angle or within parameters that will allow the flow of air, yeah, such that a lift is maintained in the aircraft, which is flying through the air. And so let's come back to the Mark 8. Now, and this is very significant, it appears that this problem was noted very late in the development stage because we are told the MCA's Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System yeah, to correct this problem of the nose pitching up was introduced in Part 25 certification. That was very late, which suggests the problem was noted very late, which also suggests that this is not something that occurs all the time, yeah, because of course it depends on wind speeds, conditions, etc, etc, which in my view is dangerous. Why? Because it means it can occur any time without warning, unexpectedly. So unexpectedly that maybe a pilot would not have time to react and correct the situation. Now fascinatingly, if you look at it that way, the introduction of the MCAs makes perfect sense. It was to protect the aircraft from this danger, so that when the nose up happens, yeah, suddenly, the MCAs automatically and suddenly, yeah, correct the situation, even before the pilot is aware of what's happening. So what happens is that this danger comes, the plane pitches nose up, automatically the MCAs take the nose of the plane down, and then the pilot reacts by straightening the plane. And then the new angle of attack should be okay to keep the aircraft in the air. And all is good up to there. Now here is where the huge problem comes in. You are a pilot and you have no idea about these MCAs and how they work. So the question we must first tackle is why did the manufacturers, Boeing, not inform the pilots? Now my researchers unearth different answers from different sources. Number one it was believed that the pilot would not even notice. And the second one is that the manufacturers did not want to load, especially new pilots, with too much information. Both those responses don't make any sense to me. Yeah, maybe you can assist me so that they make sense to me. But from where I sit, they don't make any sense. Now let's look at this thing from a commercial point of view. Yeah, you're in business, you're manufacturing aircrafts. And you've already developed this new aircraft, you spent millions of dollars to reach a certain stage, and then you discover this problem. You have a decision to make. Either you ditch the entire project and lose all those millions of dollars, and you go back to the drawing board. Or you do what Boeing did, and you try and manage the situation. Now, in my view, this is the reason why yeah, the world should have a strong argument for not allowing a major manufacturer of aircrafts to be a private enterprise, yeah, dependent on profits. Because you can clearly see the danger of having an aircraft manufacturer 
in private business. Clearly, it is very, very dangerous to have a manufacturer of aircrafts in the business of making profits. That is really what it is. Anyway, we'll now go to part two of this video where I'll give you a theory, a very chilling theory, of what may have happened in Ethiopia last Sunday. I hope we're all now ready for that part two because we have identified the elephant in the room. It is now very clear to us where the MCAs were introduced. Yeah, because without them, this aircraft is not safe. That's really what it is. See you shortly in part two of this video.